So the next part here, first, just a little bit of motivation. We have a system where this is the true impulse response. But when we look at, and I'll get back to how to define that, the cross-correlation function between the input and the output. So bef previously we looked at the autocorrelation, but now we are, that means correlation with yourself. But now we look at correlation between yourself and someone else, between input and output in this case. Then you have something that's totally different. And then what we'll get back to in discussing is what is called pre-widening. If you do that, then you will see that this here, estimate of the impulse response, is quite similar to the true that is out there. But we'll get to that in a moment. At least it can help us doing that to identify what is the model structure. So what I mentioned is, get back to the cross-covariance or cross-correlation function. Here I'll just write the cross-correlation, the uh, cross-covariance, sorry. And what we have here is the cross-covariance between x and y and like k is defined as the sum of all the possible products of xt minus the mean value of xt times yt plus k. So you shift the output k steps forward in time. That also means to stick inside the interval of the vector of your observations, then you have to stop at n minus k. So that's the sum. It's very similar to the covariance between the only difference is that we have to we cannot use all observation. In that sense, it's similar to the autocorrelation. And likewise, for the autocorrelation, we divide by n instead of n minus k. So that's the same thing. The only difference is here that when you go backward in time, we can write that in many different ways. Here, what we do is that instead of going k step backward in time, we send x k step forward in time. Then we can do the sum over the same element. We could also shift it, use the same expression up here, and then just shift the sum to start from, to go to n, and then add, start at n, at 1 plus k, sorry. And the cross correlation function, well, you just take the cross covariance function and normalize that by the square root of the product of the variance of the input and the output, which is kind of the usual calculation and normalizing to get a correlation. So that is as usual. And also this here, if one of the signals is white noise with mean zero, then the estimated variance of the cross correlation function is one over n. So we get the same two divided by the square root of n as plus minus that as our uncertainty or standard error I mean, prediction interval in case there's no cross correlation. Now, if we have a system here with an input and an output, then we can have an impulse response here of the system that we want to identify. Now, the reason why we saw what we saw previously is that when you look at the auto correlation or auto covariance of the output here at like k, what you get is including the structure of the input. So if you have non-wide inputs, then when you go through the system, you will have a color that comes from the color of your input, and you'll have part that comes from the actual system here. So if you look at the cross covariance between x and y or some lag, then for impulse response, you can also see that what you get is the weighted sum of the auto covariance of the input process as your output. So this is the reason why when we just look at the cross correlation between the input and the output, it does not just contain hi, it also contains a component that belongs to the auto covariance of auto correlation, same thing, in this sense, for the input signal. And that is where pre-widening come into play. Because if you can remove this, then what we get for the cross correlation here is exactly hi. So this is just white noise where there's no depending in time. Then we, we would be much happier. 
So the systems that we're going to look at here are systems where we have an input, xt, then we have the system here, and then what we do here is that we add some noise here to get an observation yt. So that's how we look at things, and we say that our system here has an operator, let's just call it h of b to give it as a transfer function, and we can write it, as we've done up here, as an infinite sum of the previous inputs, also future inputs if it's non-causal, plus the structure that you get from the noisy input here. Now, if you know the auto-correlation, auto-covariance of x and the noise, well, then we can do the math and we can see that besides what we got before, for the auto-covariance here, when we look at the output, we get some part that comes from x and from the system, but we also get some structure from the output here, we call it in the sum here, assuming that these two are independent. And if you look at just the cross covariance between x and y, then the noise here doesn't matter because of the independence. So that is the same as saying there's no feedback from n to x or from y to x because then there will they'll no longer be independent. So how to estimate this parameters in this system? Well, what we s what I've postulated earlier on is if you do pre-widening that can help us do the trick. And the reason for that is, as I also mentioned before, when you look at the cross covariance here, it contains the auto covariance of the x here. So if we could get rid of this, we would be able to estimate the impulse response. So that means we want x to be white noise because then we will get exactly what we're looking for. Now, how do we make x white? We use a model help us do that. This is what we do. It's a four-point recipe. Basically, the first thing you do is that you look at the input series here and you try to model that. How can we make a model for the input series? Assume that we can make an ARMA-style model for that. Then we use that to pre-widen the input. That means basically what we have here are the residuals from your armor style model. So alpha t is a white noise signal. Now what we do is that we take the same model here and we use that to filter the output series here and then we get some beta t's here and then we estimate the impulse response by looking at the auto, uh, the cross covariance between and cross correlation between alpha and beta. So that's the game, the name of the game. I will show you a later example. First, just a very, very small example. So let's assume that the X here has an AR1 structure and we fit an armor model to some data that we have here. Then we, in case of an AR1 structure, basically what we have to do to do the filtering is to say that we take X minus this estimated coefficient times the previous X that we have here. And then we do the same thing, take that coefficient, and then take the previous y. Then we have x and y filtered. And then we look at the autocorrelation of those two. And what we see is that the filtered x is indeed white noise. And the filtered y here has a nice exponential decay as what we wanted to have, or at least what was the true input into the, to the system. And we can also see in the cross correlation here, there's nothing here in the negative lag, so it's a causal system. There's something like zero that's expected. Same thing both places. And then you just have effectively just a scaling to get over here because it's white noise. So in this case, we have the estimated impulse response here. And then below here, we draw the full true values. And if you just look at the graphs, 
well, you see out here that the values are too large, but if you look at it here, you can easily see the exponential decay. That's sufficient in order to know which modern class to look for in order to f estimate this. <coughs>